It's such a crazy, like Nashville. I mean, oh. I've heard so many stories about how it was on Music Row and the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, you know, and man, it's just a whole different damn place. Yeah, man, I, I gravitated towards the old guys when I got here, like at least the guys that had been writing the songs that, you know, and I, I got to know like Buddy Cannon and oh, yeah, you know, Waylon Holyfield and, um, and, you know, like Pat Alger and all, you know, that little Garth crew, man. I got in with those guys, but dude the stories man uh you yeah. know i love the songs but man you get in there and you hear you start hearing i was talking to ralph murphy one time and another one another great one that passed away but he i was talking about harry nelson you know the uh you put the lime in the coconut drink a bowl of that <laughs> guy man i love harry nelson and i was i said <laughs> something about him and ralph was like oh yeah i, uh, I remember hanging out with i hung out with him one day man i was you know me and ringo <laughs> uh we we were in a studio in LA and, and here comes Harry and, and John Lennon come barreling in there, man, and they're both just so drunk. <laughs> and, and I'm like, wait a minute, Ralph. Yeah. You were, and he's like, oh well, he's like, I don't think you know, Ringo was in there. I was at the time I was working with the birds, and I'm like, wait, Ralph, what the fuck? The birds, John Lennon, <laughs> like, Aaron, calm down, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh yeah, man, man. But yeah, dude, I love listening to those guys. I know, and the damn, they say it so nonchalantly, you know, like yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, had a TV dinner for supper last night. I mean, it's the same. Like Bobby Bear told me one time, he was talking about Waylon, and and he said he was in the studio. He was talking about Waylon Jennings' harmony, and he said there could nobody. That's why Waylon always sang his own harmony because there could nobody sing harmony like Waylon and he said nobody ever talks about that but that's the truth and he said I was in the studio that day when they did only daddy that walk the line and when he hit that oh he said he just mm -hmm. stood back crossed his arms and just hit that high note and it was like solid you know really? but he says it like he just you know went to the mailbox one day and got the paper and come back and stepped in dog shit or something like it's just <laughs> casual yeah. like it happens every day Man, I'm um, crazy. To, of course, I know you and Bobby are y'all are been buddies a while, man. But I, I've gotten to hang out with him a couple of times. He hired me to sing some demos several years ago. I think I might have told you about that. Uh, man, just what a what a great dude, man. So calm and cool, and just he. Uh, but I remember he. Uh, I guess 2016, I flew down to uh, Willie's picnic, and I flew down there with the Cannon family, Buddy and Marla and Melanie and Billy and mm -hmm. and Bobby, he wasn't, it was the year they did the Wayland tribute, tribute at Austin City Limits. Mm -hmm. So he flew down for Willie's picnic, but he didn't, uh, he wasn't on the picnic. He was just doing the, that tribute show to Wayland. Yeah. But he just came to hang out with Merle and Willie and all of them. But anyway, man, he, he, uh, Buddy had leased a bus and it was just parked back there. We didn't go anywhere on it, but he just had it for us to sit on. And so B Bobby was on there and he said, well, I'm going to go say hi to Merle. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see you on a little bit. So he walked off the bus and went to Merle's bus and came back and didn't say a word, just went straight to the back of the bus and laid down because he'd gotten, he'd been on there. Uh, I think he must have fallen onto one of Merle's uh, joints, <laughs> 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 but, or maybe he did, maybe it was secondhand, but he just went straight back there and went to sleep <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And, uh, but man, that was, I, I always thought, man, it was just so cool. He's here's, you know, you're backstage at the, at Willie Nelson. Here's Bobby Bear just kind of wandering around and yeah. you look up and he's over there talking to Christopherson and they're mm -hmm. hugging. And it's just like, it's just, uh, but man, I really like Bobby. I, I, I wish I'd like to spend some more time with him. I did. I, I'm sure you've seen it that his, the guitar that Shel Silverstein oh, left yeah. him, that gut string, he, when I was singing those demos for him, I was having to learn them on the spot because he didn't have them recorded. And so he, he would play them for me and then I would just kind of learn them. And at some point I asked him, I said, Could, I was like, can I see your guitar? I'm going to try to figure out where I'm going here. And he handed it to me and I, I was like, man, this guitar is light. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh yeah, Shell left me that. And he pointed down at the end of the headstock, you know, it says Shell. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. That big, those big black label maker things. And yeah. 
I've got a but, picture uh, of that. We wrote on that actually. Uh, yeah, I took a picture of the guitar. <laughs> I didn't get a picture with Bobby though. <laughs> <laughs> That's Let's something. Man. He's got all Jerry Reed's old fishing tackle in his garage. I mean, it looks like junk that he dug out of the damn dumpster or something or the bottom of the lake. And it's all Jerry Reed's old tackle boxes, fishing rods. There's a trophy bass that because they had that uh, that fishing tournament on Monday or Tuesday nights in uh, Hendersonville. Um, yeah, yeah. Man, I mean, he he's he's he. Yeah, Bobby's one of a kind. I, I, he never really got the career that Merle and those guys did in a way, as far as he's not really a household name, unless you know country music like Merle Haggard and Willie Nelson. And, but man, he, yeah. he was right there with them the whole time, man. By uh, far. Yeah. Uh, and they, and that there was such a mutual respect thing back then. I, you know, I th he, there was well, among those, among those guys that were the, the, the real truth there were no tricks back then man you couldn't mm -hmm. you couldn't cover up somebody that couldn't sing and shit like that man those guys could sing they could write they could play every last damn one of them and and they had access to these great songwriters and that was another thing man great songwriter you couldn't you couldn't fool your way into thinking somebody making somebody think you were a great songwriter and that's why yeah. you know shell and like bob mcdill and oh, guys yeah. like that were they were great songwriters and that's you know people knew where to get great songs and yeah, I can't imagine. Can you imagine having that? Like you cutting a record and being like, you know, uh, man, I want to call Shell Silverstein and see if he's got anything. You know, like what the hell? Or I want to call Chris. Yeah, Chris, I bet he's got some songs. Like bullshit. Now it's like it. <laughs> I know. Now you have to go through the creative department at a publishing <laughs> company, and then they're you yeah. know depending on who you are, they're not even gonna play the good shit. So that's right. Yeah. Oh. Uh Mel Tillis told me one time, like five or six years ago, that he went to Warner. He knew somebody at Warner or something. He was trying to pitch Blake Shelton a song. They didn't even know who the hell he was. Of course, he told it in his way that only he can tell. And it yeah. was freaking hilarious. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm it just really kind of sinks in sometimes. Like, man, this is like, this is you nuts. Know, I've, I've never met Mel... Oh. You know, Buddy Cannon was his bass player for a long time, and then oh, ran yeah. his publishing company. Yep. And he, boy, he's got some twisted ass <laughs> stories about yeah. that guy. <laughs> I love Buddy, man. I, we wrote one song together, and he's so busy that you know he's working with Willie all the time and all kinds of people. But man, what a he's another guy like like Teddy. I mean, he's just kind of who he is. He's never changed. You know. Yeah. And him, you know, him and Teddy are real close. I was. I think I was with, I was with Buddy one day, and I played him a song that me and Teddy wrote. And we called Teddy, and I, I'll never forget it. It's like they told each other, they, "It's like, hey man, I love you. I love you too. I'll talk to you later." You know, and they really do, man. They, they do, yeah. It's just, it was just different back then, man. I, 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 I say that I, I wish I would have been around back then, but I'd be dead by now. I mean, there's so much cocaine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somebody might have offered me some, and I might have uh, just, you know, done it. So. Yeah, there was a camaraderie among all the writers and the singers too. Uh, yeah, you, you yeah. know, and like it was a it community. Was, it was, and they'd have these guitar pulls over at Roger Miller's or Willie's, or yeah, I mean, man, I've just I've thought a lot about you know wishing I was back from that era, but then yeah. again, it's like you said, I'd probably be dead. <laughs> but hopefully, I'd have some good songs. That would outlive God, me. Man, can you imagine like can you imagine like being Bobby Bear and turning on a country radio station now and just being like, What what the hell is this? You know? And I don't know yeah. if maybe he doesn't think like that, but boy, I would. <laughs>